My name is Bill Smith. Uh, I'm a member of the Ohio National Road Association uh, and also an employee of the uh, uh, Clark County Park District uh, and help with history programming in the county. Uh, and uh, we are here uh, at the beautiful Pennsylvania House uh, to talk about the, uh, the development and history of the National Road. Uh, National Road, uh, it was the first interstate highway that went through America. Uh, it was something that was conceived long before, uh, even by uh, uh, such figures as George Washington, and uh, uh, who had vast land holdings in the West, and early on wanted to find a means to develop a roadway that would connect the East and the West across the uh, mountains of Pennsylvania. Uh, in uh, 18, uh, uh, 03, Albert Gallatin and uh, Secretary of State under Thomas Jefferson uh, then pushed for the development of the National Road and the uh, bill was signed by President Jefferson uh, in which the National Road was then begun at uh, uh, Cumberland, Maryland uh, uh, and ended uh, years later at Vandalia, Illinois. Uh, when they first developed the road there was a, uh, uh, a man by the name of John McAdams, and, uh, and he was basically responsible for the technique that they used to form this road uh, to make it a more permanent surface, and it was uh, 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 a system of using stones, and as they would, and you have to understand that all of this labor was done by human or animal labor. There were no, no big uh, uh, bulldozers or other power equipment that did this but they would dig out the roadbed and then they would start with different layers of stones and as they would come to the top each layer was smaller and smaller to where the top layer would be something like crushed limestone and then they would level that out and that provided a, a fairly permanent surface and allowed for drainage. By 1818 uh, ended up uh, reaching uh, Wheeling, uh, West Virginia and the Ohio River. Uh, construction stopped because federal funding dried up and at the first section of that road from Cumberland to Wheeling was federally funded and uh, it was funded by uh, the land sales that they were making the pioneers who were traveling west but it was an immediate success uh, it opened up uh, uh, the road not only for people who wanted to settle out here uh, but it opened up the opportunity for people in the West to bring their goods back east. And so there was a free flow of uh, commerce uh, and people. They eventually obtained funding uh, in the uh, 1830s and they, uh, uh, Congress turned a lot of the funding over to the states and they started construction on the, uh, uh, the section in Ohio. Uh, by uh, uh, 18, 33, the roadway had gotten as far as Columbus, and by 1838, uh, it had finally gotten to Springfield. Um, and we are today uh, standing in the Pennsylvania House, which is on the National Road on the west end of Springfield, uh, which was constructed as a tavern uh, of that period of time and housed many, many uh, different people who were traveling west. The uh, funding dried up once again as they uh, uh, reached this point in Springfield in 1838. And this was the western end of Springfield. This was also the, uh, at that time, the western end of the National Ro Road. Uh, and uh, Springfield became known as the city at the end of the pike. And this tavern, the Pennsylvania House, became known as the uh, in at the end of the pike. People uh, uh, in power in Dayton and Eaton uh, got involved and they did not want the National Road to bypass them. Uh, so they created what was considered the counterfeit pike. Uh, and they developed a roadway and uh, the start of it is right out there behind us. There is a diagonal road that is the Dayton Turnpike. Uh, and uh, it uh, started off the National Road and went down toward Dayton and Eaton before connecting back up uh, by Richmond, Indiana. 
uh, Congress devoted a certain percentage of the, uh, of the sale of public lands, uh, and that was public lands in the Northwest Territory, including Ohio, uh, to the development of the road. But as those funds dried up to maintain the road, uh, it was left up to the states. And the only way the states could do it was to make this a toll road. So you found that uh, across the national road then, including Ohio, that there were toll stations set up uh, about every 20 miles uh, that uh, the people would have to stop and pay a toll to get through. Uh, the, uh, the roadway, uh, I will mention, is marked, or originally was marked uh, by uh, mile markers, which uh, were set on the north side of the road uh, at an interval of uh, um, every mile and on every mile marker they would have the mileage to the next principal city the mileage to the last city you were uh, in and then they would also have at the top of the marker the distance to Cumberland Maryland where the uh, uh, National Road started uh, it went into decline then after the Civil War because of the development of the railroad uh, and when you could travel by rail and travel so much farther each day, uh, then it made more sense to do that. So the National Road basically slowed down. The road fell into disrepair. There was another revival of the National Road, which uh, uh, started in uh, uh, the late teen, uh, 1880s. And believe it or not, it, was, uh, it first started with uh, bicycles. As bicycles were developed in this country, the rage became bicycling on the National Road. And then the next big thing uh, was the automobile. And the automobile created this resurgence in eastern Ohio by laying uh, a surface of bricks down. Uh, tried using concrete as a permanent road surface and then eventually asphalt. The National Road was heavily traveled and there, it estimated there was a tavern every mile along the way. Uh, so it was uh, the interstate highway in the nation. By uh, 1926, uh, they had changed the, uh, the numbering system in the country with the highways and this became Route 40. As you drive the, uh, the National Road uh, in Clark County and in Ohio, you can still see uh, old motels and you'll still see the, uh, uh, in many cases, the signage. Uh, the popularity, you know, from the 30s through the 60s was, was tremendous for these. Uh, along that way, the blacksmith shops were replaced by uh, gas stations uh, and, and diners of all sorts. You know, it connected large cities, it also connected villages, at, which were known as pipe towns, and many of those villages where the National Road went through were called Main Street, and so uh, the National Road became uh, uh, the Main Street of America. You know, I have been fortunate to travel the National Road uh, from Cumberland, Maryland, through Springfield and it is a fantastic trip.